Good afternoon and welcome to this week's edition of Keeping an Eye on the Geopolitical Ball with me, Jamie Shea, Senior Fellow at Friends of Europe. Well, last weekend we were treated to the sunny spectacle of the G7 leaders meeting uh, on a beach in Cornwall. And this was significant, of course, because it was the first visit of President Biden to Europe, uh, where he can form new working relationships with his counterparts from Europe and from Canada and Japan. It was also the first in-person meeting of these leaders having been locked in uh, through video conferences uh, during the COVID-19 uh, uh, crisis. It was also a chance after a year of highly uh, nationalist and protectionist policies in dealing with the pandemic uh, for the leaders of the G7 to adopt a more cooperative stance of helping the rest of the world and not just helping uh, themselves. Biden came declaring that America is back, but he tried to do more than just say this by suggesting that the G7 could be the hub of a new alliance of democracies standing up to the authoritarians. That's the narrative that he has framed for the rest of the 21st century. And to underscore this, uh, four uh, democratic countries outside the G7, India, South Korea, uh, South Africa and Australia were invited to participate in the sessions. Not going to be easy to disinvite them in the future, uh, I think. Boris Johnson and Biden also tried to set the tone of the Alliance of Democracies early on by signing a new Atlantic Charter. This recalls the 1941 document between Churchill and Roosevelt on a British ship off the coast of Canada that prefigured the end of fascism and the building of the great multinational institutions of the post-war uh, world. But the G7, of course, has been criticized quite a lot recently. Number one, for not being representative, of course, the G20, uh, which includes far more of the major powers, was key to handling the global financial crisis in 2008-2009. And the G7 has been accused for coming up with lots of announcements, which please the media, politicians love these, but then being a little bit thin when it comes to delivery on the resources. For instance, back in 2009, it pledged to devote $100 billion in climate finance to the poorer countries and uh, still hasn't done so. Uh, indeed, it repledged to do it yet again in Cornwall uh, last uh, uh, Sunday. Now, if the G7 is going to be a viable institution, it needs to do two things. First, it has to rebuild prosperity, build trade uh, and economic exchanges among the member states. Secondly, it has to be a leader in reaching out to the rest of the world in solving global challenges. On the first count, there was some progress in terms of agreeing a 15% tax on multinational uh, corporations to uh, uh, ensure that they can't hide their profits away in, in tax havens. Uh, but there wasn't very much when it came to new trade pacts. Uh, the US President Biden still seems quite reluctant to go down that particular road, given by America sentiment uh, back in the United States. Uh, and although there have been some good indications of the EU and the US working together on aircraft or steel uh, subsidies, aluminium, there's still a great deal to do in opening up services and the digital economy across the Atlantic. So attention turned to what the G7 can offer the rest of the world. Two big themes here. Number one, of course, was the pandemic. The G7 uh, promised 1 billion uh, uh, vaccines to the poorer countries to be delivered by the end of next year. Biden offered 500, the EU uh, uh, 100 billion. Uh, uh, million, excuse me, extra, uh, and uh, the uh, UK also 100 million extra. Now, this is good news, but unfortunately, uh, the World Health Organization and the Secretary General of the UN have pointed out that we need 11 billion doses to really get on top uh, of the virus. And we need these now, not at the end of 2022, 20, uh, particularly if we're going to prevent an upsurge in Africa and new dangerous variants from emerging. The G7 pledged to set up a global early warning system to detect uh, 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 pandemics uh, better and earlier, and also a better tracking and analysis uh, system uh, for 
for pathogens. It pledged also to help uh, developing countries to improve their domestic production of vaccines and to reform the World Health Organization. But given the dimensions of the crisis, was this too little too late? On climate change, the G7 leaders reiterated their commitment to a carbon-free economy uh, by mid-century. This is a good lead into the COP26 meeting in Glasgow in November. They promised to stop subsidizing fossil fuel projects in their foreign aid programs and to ring fence 30% of the world's land and 30% of the world's oceans for uh, the protection of uh, biodiversity. Uh, uh, there was also mention of China, uh, critical in terms of China's abuse of human rights uh, and its uh, 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 market uh, manipulations when it comes to uh, dumping its products uh, uh, on international markets. Particularly, Beijing reacted quite fiercely to that criticism, uh, declaring that the G7 was uh, obsolete. But it do show, that does show that inevitably, as the democracies come together uh, uh, against uh, uh, the authoritarians, they will only provoke uh, those authoritarians and deepen the divisions. How we overcome them is going to be, of course, the key question for the future. So in a nutshell, as the uh, G7 departed on Sunday evening, did they do enough to make themselves the new global hub of the democracies? Well, we'll see if they deliver. That's going to be the starting point. We'll see if they are able to attract other countries to participate in future. We'll see if they can carry their initiatives into the G20 and into other international institutions for implementation. Uh, it's a worthy effort, but my sense is it's going to take a lot more than a nice barbecue on a sunny beach in Cornwall uh, in uh, uh, the presence of the royal family uh, to uh, before we know the definitive answer to that particular question. Thanks for watching and uh, listening this week. Look forward, as always, to seeing you again on the screen next week.